this I feel like uh, this scripture just came to me because I, I feel like this will interpret what happened Sunday morning. Acts 10 44, while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all them that heard the word. Now I'll say more about that in just a little bit. If you look right here, just man, let me just let me just share something that <coughs> Sunday morning to me the afterglow was one of the most powerful afterglows I've ever been in my life. Not only in this church, but uh, at any time anywhere, the afterglow. And I I, I want to uh, I feel like it's important that this church understand that rather than just get some little uh, sermon at and then go home, that I believe that God wants us to meet with Him in such a way that our life has changed. Yes. And so I call it, my title tonight will be God Encounters. Mm -hmm. A better way for me to say it, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, and sometimes the titles I'm shortening for YouTube, for YouTube. One of the ways that I would say, learning how to relate and respond to the anointing or the presence of God. Learning, so it's the it's learning how to relate. So you can relate to God in fasting and singing and prayer and praise and in worship. And then when God begins to manifest Himself, then you learn how to respond. And and you know, I learned this from a prophet. God, no response is a response. Okay, so we'll, we want God encounters. In other words, Christianity it just is not coming to a church building and enduring, tolerating a meaningless, dry, boring ritual. It's meaning with God such a way that our life will change. That's why we take time to praise God, to worship God, for the gifts to operate, and because we want to meet with God. We don't want to, it's not, we're not trusting in a ritual. We want to know God. We want a relationship with God. Okay, so Peter spoke these words and the Spirit of God fell. Now, uh, I just want to explain to me Sunday morning was so powerful yes. that the anointing and this, this is just my interpretation that from the pre-service prayer and then the Sunday school class and then the singing, the praise the worship, the gifts of the Holy Spirit the, the message, everything everything brought us to a certain place that at the end of the message and I, I want you to understand, I don't always know what to do at the end of the message. At the end, of, I'm so focused on the message. When we come to the end, I'm trying to discern what does God want. Does He, you know, does He want to get people saved? Do he, does He want me to go into deliverance? What kind of, do He want me to bring the altar workers forward? Uh, do we, does God want us to go back and uh, praise and worship? What does, what does the Holy Spirit want? Sometimes I know, and sometimes I have to wait upon the Lord. That's why it's important that we, after the end of the message, many times, we wait upon the Holy Spirit, and, we, and the Holy Spirit operates again in the gifts, and the Holy Spirit then is giving the altar call, and then we follow what, what God is leading. And so that's basically what we're doing. So uh, I don't, I'm not going to try to pretend to you that I know I always know what's going to happen, and that I, I need to be led by the Spirit, and that was, that's what makes it so adventurous. Now, what began to happen was, when, we, when the Spirit of God led us, to go back in the singing and praising and worshiping, the Spirit of God fell. And I'll say more about this a little bit in the Scripture. I just want to explain something to you. That I feel like sometimes we just have a little talk that we understand that we, we need to really understand that God is extremely attracted to praise and worship. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's so attracted to it, that's how it is in heaven. Yes. That there's praise, there's worship, there's adoration, there's singing, and it's loud in heaven. Amen. And it's loud in here. That, that may offend some people, but it does not offend God. Okay, so what happened Sunday morning when the Spirit of God led us then to go back in the singing and praising and worshiping and the saints of God began dancing, then what happened was the, the Spirit of God began to move on, on different people. Different things were happening. And I heard screaming back over here. And the, the, the teenager was back, here, back in here having a very... She had a life-changing experience with a life-changing God. Now, that's what I'm calling a God account. Now, what I'm saying to you is that doesn't just happen. Is that God is attracted to people that are desperate for a touch of God that will sing the praise and worship, that will reach out, that will open up the heart. So then something powerful begins to happen over here. And things are getting knocked off of, 
the walls over there, things are falling down. And that's, see, that, that's how you, oh, that's a sign. We're having church, okay? All kinds of things are falling down off of that, <laughs> that thing back there. <laughs> and I go, oh boy, we're, the, we're going, we're getting somewhere now. If it were all got a telephone phone on you, there's not, there's not a lot. So what began to happen was, then, so this is going on back in here. This little lady who ended up getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit, getting baptized in fire. Yeah. And went through a uh, powerful she deliverance. Was, yes. it was her life changed? Amen. And she had a Amen. gun encounter. Okay? Yes. Now, so then, then one of the youth goes and grabs another youth and asks that youth to pray for that that youth. And uh, the next thing you know, so there's a whole lot happening down here. I mean, there's a whole lot. Then another youth came and began to pray here, and the more began to happen. And they they began to pray, and, and the spirit of God began to move all over the place. And, but I will say I will say this again. Peter spoke his words, and the Spirit of God fell. Amen. And what I'm saying Sunday morning, the Spirit of God fell. Yeah. And when the Spirit of God fell, things yeah. begin to happen all over the place. Yes. Right. And so someone goes in and gets someone down the fellowship hall, and then there, there's a prophecy, there's tongues, there's interpretation, all kind of thing going on over here. There's thing going on here. There's thing going over here. There's thing going on here. There's thing going over there. And what I'm saying, that church. Yes. But I'm saying multiple Amen. people begin to have God encounters. Now what happened? Okay, what happened is that people began to relate to God. Now they attracted God to them. And when they attracted God to them, God will inhabit the praises yes. of His people. Amen. So let me, so this is just kind of a little thing that uh, I felt like the Holy Spirit showed me one time. When people praise, and God, God will inhabit the praises of His people. So the praise of brings the presence of God. Yeah. And then his presence is full of joy. Yeah. And then the joy of the Lord is his strength. Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah. if you, see, if, if you don't follow that truth in the beginning, you can be tired, you can be oppressed, you can be offended, you can have a nasty attitude, but by faith, you begin singing, you yes. begin praising, you begin singing, you begin praising, you, the attitude, oh, on this side, I don't I get rid of this, so like a, you know, like a migraine headache, I'm going to get rid of you. And you get rid of the, the attitude, and you begin to get the Spirit. So now you begin to, by faith, you begin to sing. The praise brings the presence to God, and His presence fulls of joy. Now that nasty attitude God, now you got a good attitude, and the joy of the Lord becomes the strength. You weren't tired, but now you're strong, and now you're in His presence, and, and you feel strong. Now you're out there dancing, and the next thing you know, you've forgotten you had a problem before you came. What happened is, is Peter spoke these words, and the Spirit of God fell. Sunday morning, the Spirit of God fell. There were so many things happening at one time that, my God, were, uh, I mean, it's just powerful. Uh, when the God we had that on DVD, that was just, that was extreme. That was one that was powerful. There was so much happening. Uh, man, I, I, we used up about a rerun car full of Kleenex on that one Sunday morning service. It's just extremely powerful. So let me show that they were going somewhere. What I want to say is that God wants us, He wants to nourish that. He wants to enrich that. He wants us to understand that it just accidentally happened. That when you invite Him and you welcome Him, see the whole thing is we're not trying to create an atmosphere to make you and I comfortable. We're trying to make God comfortable, and if God's comfortable, we will be comfortable. Amen. 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 So that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to take the atmosphere. Now, when we get in that, when when the atmosphere been taken like that, this is just my definition, and this is out of the Book of Luke that the glory cloud is formed. And now the cloud, God will speak. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that everybody, the Spirit of God, is speaking to everybody Everyone. that wants to hear. Yeah. God will Amen. begin to speak to people out of the cloud. Okay, so He'll speak to someone who's lost, like someone who's lost, someone who, in the process of getting saved as, mm -hmm. and, in that realm, someone who's backslidden, He'll speak to the backslider, someone lukewarm, He'll speak to someone lukewarm, someone needs healing, He'll talk to them, someone needs deliverance, He'll talk to them, and if someone needs awesome. restoration, He'll talk Amen. to them in that way, Amen. someone yes. needs a word, direction, yes. so they need great. guidance, Amen. God will speak to them in that way. God will speak to everybody yes. if, we, if we got an ear to hear, if we're, if we're trying to tune in, okay? God would do something for everybody. The key is understanding we have it one because we put our bodies in the church building. We've got to be with the God of the house. Amen. Okay, that's the key, okay? Okay, what I'm saying, we're, we're going to see there are certain things that we can do that Sunday morning God wants us to nourish us and enrich us and understand some of the things that are going on in the spirit realm, okay? So let me just finish this in, in Acts 10 and we'll go somewhere else. When Peter spoke this word, the Holy Ghost fell upon all them that heard the word. 
And they of the circumcision which believed were stoned as many that came to Peter, because on that Gentiles was poured out, yes. was poured out, poured out. the whole the, the gift that was also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Yes. So there's That's something true. happened, okay? Oh. So when when Peter That's spoke, the, the Spirit fell. And then the next thing you know, people are building around in tongues. Amen. Next thing you know, they're magnifying God. Because yes. what happens to you? You give a message in tongues, you give an interpretation of tongues, you give a prophecy. When the Spirit of God moves through you, you feel God. I mean, that river, that river in you makes you alive. And it brings life to Jesus said, the words I speak, they're spirit and they're life. Now here, let me, let me just put this in here before I... When, uh, when I read the scripture and really understood it, that Jesus said in John chapter 7, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let him come to me and drink. What we don't want to do is become comfortable coming to the well and watching other people drink, but we not drink. Because when you drink of the river, it will change you. Because everything shall live where the river God shall flow. Okay, so we can come and we can drink, or we can come and watch other people drink. Now here's here's what I saw. This is this is what I began to pray, and I prayed this for a long time. I didn't have to it didn't happen to, to me as quick as it did with these young ones here. I began to pray when I saw Jesus said, If any man thirst lay to come to me and drink. and drink, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow. So I began to see the Bible, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You know and uh I, I, before I think I understood that with my head, then I, you know, I began to, I want that river. Amen. I want that river. Don't you? Yes. Okay, so what I'm saying is that we begin to, you should, God said, in Jeremiah, you shall seek me. You shall find, you shall find me when? You seek search for God with all, with all of your heart, soul, strength, and mind. So the key is that, so we, what, what we don't want to do is come watch other people seek. We want to, you shall. How many want to find God in a new way? Amen. It's not that you're not saved. There's a just another there's life upon life, precept upon precept, faith upon faith. You keep growing. There's always new anointing. There's always new realm. You know, I don't care how long you've been saved. Uh, you meet with God, and you're going to be changed. And that's what we're talking about tonight. God encounters. I call it learning really how to relate and respond to the presence of God or to the anointing of God. Well. To, to say the same thing another way. Here's what I want in a very powerful way. I want this extremely often. Moses, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years on the backside of the desert, his perspective of himself was that he was a failure. Yes. They had a, he had a calling, but he missed it because he boo-booed back in Egypt. After uh, all, the, all the learning of Egypt, then he had to unlearn on the backside of the desert everything he learned in Egypt. Moses was very well educated. Okay, so then he had to unlearn some things out here. And then when he turns aside and sees that burning bush, he had, it took all the faith that he had to muster to turn aside and see this great, this great sight. And what I'm saying is, one burning bush experience changed his life. Yeah. And here's, what, here's a, you know, let me say the same thing kind of another way. Sunday morning changed my life. Yes. So, yes. Now, I'm not, I'm not, you don't have to raise your hand, but I'm going to ask you, if you if, if God did something special, powerful in your life, that you feel like your life went to another level, raise your hand, keep it up. Sunday morning. Just Sunday morning. Okay? Just Sunday morning. Just look, look at my hand. Now, what I'm saying, that's a God encounter. Okay? And so, what, no matter how many people come, it's not how many people come, it's not how few or how many, and then God come. And then we meet with God such a way that our life would change. See, what I'm saying is that that God wants that not just happen, that didn't accidentally happen, that we've been inviting Him, we've been welcoming Him, the way you've been singing, the way you've been praising, is that what <clears throat> you are attracting God, you're attracting the power of the presence of God <clears throat> by you. You're not just singing in the words falling to the ground, you're singing to the very heart of God. Amen. You're willing to be vertical, and you're becoming so alive, and God is so attracted Amen. to what's happening here. Yes. Okay? That's true. Okay, so they heard them, so now... Peter spake, and the Spirit of God fell. Okay, when they begin to fell, the people begin to speak in tongues. They begin to magnify God. Then they, then they, they answered Peter and said, 
Can any man forbid water that they should not? Uh, should, should we be baptized and, and uh, which have received the Holy Spirit as well? So that he commanded them, verse 40, 48, to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they, they asked him to tarry a certain date, okay? Okay, so we're looking, we're looking at the calendar and we're looking at the weather forecast and, uh, after a Sunday to have a water baptism yeah. service. Now, turn to Acts chapter 2 just real quick to something that's very familiar. And uh, I'm not going to tarry here long because I've got some place I really want to go to. And I think it will help us understand that we can flow together and the anointing of God will, be, will grow and will increase upon each and every one of us. Amen. Yes. Okay, now, we are going. Here, here's the key, and I, I'll just explain this, and I, I won't, I'll won't. try not to get bogged down here because I want to go somewhere. That we, we need to understand that the, the disciples, one by one, did the call them, come and follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And, and there were people, they would walk, they walk with, can you imagine walking and talking with Jesus for three years? Oh, Just all the time that they spent, they camp out together. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're spending all this time together. But when it came to the Garden of Gethsemane, <laughs> crowds went down. Number one, crowds went down. There were multitudes when everybody yeah. getting fed, everybody getting healed, everybody getting delivered. There were multitudes that were attracted. But when he got the closer they got to the Garden of Gethsemane, the crowds went down. When, and then when he got to the Garden of Gethsemane, the Bible, and we talk a lot about Peter denying him three times, but the Bible says all his disciples forsook him. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the disciples forsook him because they were not yet willing to die to self. Okay, the more, that, if you want resurrection power, then there's got to be a death of self. If any man will come back to me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and come follow me. Okay, so there's a daily walk with God. So the disciples, they did, they flunked the test. Okay, so then Jesus, Jesus goes to the cross and then uh, and, and Jesus is resurrected in Luke twenty in Luke twenty four. Jesus walking along with some of the disciples. They don't even know. They don't know who he is. They don't recognize him. And there's when they realize this is Jesus. He's they, this is what they said. Did not our hearts burn within us yes. when he opened the scriptures to us? Yes. Okay. So then I, I I constantly ask myself when I read the word, is my heart burning? Is uh, my heart not burning? Yes. Uh, the word's not the problem. The devil's not the problem. I could be the problem, yeah. and so I need to. I need to. I need an attitude adjustment within me. Okay, to, to take this just a step further, because this is going to help you understand here. They're going to comfort you. Okay, the reason I'm sharing that's going to comfort you. <clears throat> so, Jesus, then the death, the burial, the resurrection. Then now they find out they thought all hope was lost. They thought we, Jesus is dead, but he'd been resurrected. Now they find now they got hope again. Jesus then in Luke twenty four forty nine said, "Tarry until yes. you are due with power." Amen. Now what I'm saying is the reason I, I went through this just a little bit is no no matter what mistake you made, no matter how uh, what you did wrong, they forsook Jesus, yes. and one or two of us have made mistakes, oh, yes. and, yeah, and we did to not feel oh, guilty yeah. about that. You hear, you you're, God will the scriptures will be you hear the word. And your heart will begin to burn again. Yeah, amen, and you yeah. hear God's voice and begin to tarry until yes, you are due. Yeah. Now what I'm saying is to come to the plane, you've got to understand you can make mistakes, confess, repent, get back right with God, get in position. And they had the faith then to climb into the upper chamber and tarry until mm -hmm. he said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit of God shall come yes, upon you. Yeah. So who did he who did he baptize in the Holy Spirit but people that had made mistakes that had forsook him? That's right. Okay, mm. so that's the love of God, that's the mercy of God. So now they're tarrying, okay? Now I, so I have to go somewhere with that. Now so then uh, Acts chapter two. Then the day of Pentecost is fully come, they were all they were all with one accord. They plural became one. They plural became one. That's what we call unity. That's what we call the one accord anointing. Amen. What's happening in here is that it's not an individual, it's not one or two or three or four people, it's not the choir, it's not the praise and worship team. Is that let me just let me just say this to all the musicians that are here. That God has stripped us from our instruments yes. so we stand naked before God. Because people can hide yes. behind their instrument. Yes. And God has stripped us. Remember that uh, remember the prophecy I wouldn't have not this this recent one, but one I played before about oh, yeah. uh, the woman. Remember, thou does not bow low enough. You go uh, yeah, go yeah, through yeah. this this silly little gate. 
Yeah. And, yeah, uh, but I've got my books, and I had my instruments of learning, and I had my instruments of music, and and uh, thou cannot take them with thee. Thou dost not bow low enough. Yeah. So God will strip yeah. us from time to time yes, from to things that we think that we need that we hide behind mm-hmm. or give things. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. One thing of God, yes. we can hide. So God will strip the musicians yes. of our instrument right now that we just stay before God and get our heart right with God. Yes, oh. and not think that we exist that other people can usher in, but we need to go in our we need to go in for ourselves. Yes. Okay. So then, what happens is that God pours out His Spirit, and we know that the tongues of fire came upon them, and they begin to speak. And they begin to speak in unknown tongues, and I said, "Oh, that basically the same did. They came." So under the influence of the Holy Spirit, the people that saw them said, you must be drunk. That's awesome. <laughs> so I'm asking yeah. myself, when the last time I've been so under the influence? <laughs> that other people didn't understand. Now see, you can, you can back off of the anointing to please people who do not understand, or you can go with God who does understand. Amen. Because you, you just, uh, I just oh. many years ago, I, 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 I just, AB, I did some things, and, and let me just, I did some good things, I did some things right, and I was at this church service, that's what I first got saved, I was at this church service in Macon. And what happened was, God wanted to bless me, and I'm, I'm at the, uh, this before they put the addition upon the church, and I was at the altar, and I was sitting on what they call the mourner's bench. And I'm sitting on this bench, and I knew that holy laughter was about to break loose in me. I knew if I yield to this, but my mind said, your mom and dad back there, they're not going to understand. <laughs> my mind said, yeah, go for it. Very real. <laughs> the following through, but I yielded, I rejected the thought, and I came into alignment. There I am at the altar, coming across as drunk as a skunk. I'm under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now, what I'm saying is, you and I need to understand, there's going to be, this is just the beginning. Let, let me put it this way. Let's just say, though, that like a tsunami was coming in, or a big tidal wave was coming in. And in the beginning, it's the wave is not here, but the mist of the wave. You can feel the mist of the wave before the wave get there. All we're feeling right now is the mist of where God wants yes. to take it. Okay, so all I'm doing here today is basically now we're not. I mean, we're not. Our goal not that crazy. No. Yeah, well, no, we don't want Tony, Tony pretty strong man, and, and we, we don't want to just see him spinning around on the, on the silly pants. Uh, think think it's spiritual, but what I'm saying is, there will be time the Spirit of God will begin to move upon you, and your mind will say, What will? Well, what mom and dad think? What will so and so think? What will, what, will they, what will someone say? It doesn't matter what they think, what they say, what no, they do. No, no. If it's biblical, we're going to do it. Amen. It's the place where we're, going, we're just going to obey God. We're going to, so I will come again. This, I will say this again, okay? What God gave me in Megan, Missouri was a God account. And what happened was I learned how to relate to God, and then the Spirit of God came upon me, and I knew in my spirit, I knew that... Uh, I knew that God was going to take me into holy laughter. Now, I understand I've only, I was only saved a couple of years at that time, and I didn't understand things then in the Spirit like I understand now. And I, But I knew by the Spirit that holy laughter, that well, if I yield to this, I'm going to go into holy laughter. Yeah. Amen. My, 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 my mind was thinking, what will my mom and dad think? And I yielded, and I, I went to this holy laughter, and I'm like roaring in the church. <laughs> For, for a long period of time, and it was totally free, and uh, Mom and Dad never say anything, I never say anything, uh, but I let them change. I let them change. When you yield, see, when you yield to the Holy Ghost, if you quench, that's quenching. If I were to say, oh, I'm, well, my Mom and Dad think I resist the Holy Spirit, that's resisting the Holy Spirit, that's quenching the Spirit, because you may be here, God wants to take you there, and so over and over, no matter how many times you come to Him, to try to get you there, we may say no, we may resist three, five, seven times, but there will be an eighth time. Come on, God will, God will pursue you. If you and God understand our insecurity, our lack of knowledge, and we don't understand so many things. So that's why we're having this tonight. We may follow up upon this on Friday night so that we will understand God encounters. 
learning how to relate to God and respond to God, okay? Yes. So if you want... Um, well, let me, let me say when, when one, one youth went to another youth and, and wanted uh, to be prayed for at the altar, and then the other youth came up here, what happened was the youth that wanted prayer after a period of time went through a, a great big blood-curdling scream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A great big blood-curdling scream, which I believe was a great big deliverance. Yeah. And as soon as the blood-curdling scream came, then the person started dancing and rambling around with the freedom. And I believe she had a gun encounter. And I believe that her yeah. life was changed. Yeah. And Amen. here's what I'm saying. I'm saying that church. Yeah. Yeah. Church is not hearing some dead, dry, Yes. Boring yeah, menial spiritual God. that we don't meet with God since when they, that our life would change. I'm saying her life would change. I'm saying that person's life would change. And there were other people that were flowing. There were there were tongues, there were interpretation, there were prophecy, there was weeping, there was wailing, and there was multiple people here. Suddenly when their life would change. Amen. And when I'm saying this is just the beginning. Yes. There's a potentiality of the anointing here that the spirit of revival could break out. Yeah. Oh, so yes. we need to nurture this. We need to understand this. Amen. So what we had we had powerful service Sunday morning. Yes. yes. Amen. Okay. The history. Those of us that have been here a while, we know. Amen. We know that we really got to nurture because if we have powerful service yes. on Sunday, then look out Wednesday because yeah. people get hit. Yeah. And if we have a powerful service on Wednesday, then the devil try to stop the momentum on Friday night. We have a powerful service on Friday night. The devil will see what the attack Sunday morning. But to see, yes. the devil may attack, but he won't affect us without cooperation of our will. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, when I'm saying there's a place that we got to be, yeah. we got to really begin to contend in prayer. Yeah. We got to begin to contend yeah. in, oh. in, in singing and praising and worshiping, and we got to purify our everyone. And every time that God puts His hand upon. Something with the life. We confess, we repent, we get that out of where we forsake yes, it, yes. and it activates God in the new realm. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, so the point the Amen. point here is that they begin to mock, they begin to ridicule, and they said they accuse them. They are being so moved upon by God that they're they're accused of being drunk. But they were under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Now let me put this in here, because because what was happening Sunday morning, there were so many people that this one the Bible said, Well, let's turn to turn to first Peter. I'm sorry, second Peter. I want you to see it in the Bible here. Second Peter uh, chapter Second Peter chapter one and verse twenty one. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God. Holy men of God spake. Yes. They speculated they were moved. They speculated they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, if if, if uh, I try to be very observant and try to discern what's going on in, in every 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 inch of this building when we're having church, I, I try to be aware. I try to be discerning. I try to be vertical. I'm trying to. I try to be. Uh, I'm trying to meet with God. I, but I want to be discerning. I don't just close my eyes and just ignore everything. I want to know everything that's going on in every inch of space in this building. I'm trying to discern. Sunday morning, there were many people, especially at the, uh, the through basically the whole church service, but at the end, at the end in the afterglow, and the afterglow is basically our heart response to what God had said and what God had done. God has brought us to the foot of the mountain, and now the, He was looking for a response. God had given us a word, and the word was an assignment. And what happened was the people began to come into alignment of the assignment. And snap, crack, and pop, I mean, the Spirit of God began to move. And the Bible says, Holy Man of God spake that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. I'm saying that the Holy Spirit was moving yes. through so many people that life were changed. Yes. And so, yes. this is extremely important, what I'm going to say right now. It's not about one person up front. This is a body ministry. Yeah. This is the body of Christ. Yeah. Jesus being the senior pastor, Jesus now is living his life through every his, through his body. Amen. So what that's this is an important key that God is allowing here, that God has brought us into, that we we have the privilege of being in his presence. We have the privilege to be have a calling to be part of the remnant. And what is happening, the body ministry. Rather than yeah. one person, you don't have to come to one person. We're going to one God. Amen. And God began to operate that through multiple people. Amen. Multiple people. Holy men of God. 
Moving. And the holy women of God yes. Amen. spanked they were moved Move. by the Holy Spirit. I'm, how many how many discerned Sunday morning of the Ebrahams? How many discerned that there were people here being moved? Yes. Amen. Yes. I mean, they're really being moved. Okay. Now, here's what the word "move" means in the in the uh, Greek. It means to bear. It means to bring forth. I want you. Now, I haven't been there, but the, you you ladies that have had a baby, you know to bring forth. I'm sorry. I'm not. Yes. I'm not yes. Yes. <laughs> in other words, there's going to be some movement. Amen. Hallelujah. It means to bring forth. It means to carry. It means, that's what it means. It means to be driven. It means rushing. I make you feel the river rushing to them Sunday morning. Yes. And you feel the river rushing to you tonight. Oh, yeah. But also a compliment. So there, there were some that didn't, didn't move in the gift tonight, which was a good sign, is that they're not trying to produce it in the next. If God doesn't give them Amen. something, they don't they yeah. say anything. Amen. And that's maturity beyond their years, okay? Amen. Yes. And so there's, uh, it's a, it's a, we are not a, you're not a failure because you don't move in this gift or that gift. Everybody has something, okay? Amen. So there's, everybody has primary gifting and everyone has secondary gifting. Yes. Develop your primary giftings Amen. and then uh, move on uh, to other things as time goes on. Okay, now, now let's get into the message. That basically was the introduction. Mark chapter 5. And I just absolutely love this. Mark chapter 5. This is this is pretty common. The, the certain woman, verse 25, the certain woman had issue of blood 12 years, and she had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, nothing... And she did not get any better, but rather grew worse. And when she heard of Jesus, she came in the, the crowd behind and touched his garment. For she said, she said within her heart, within her heart, within her spirit, she said, if I may just touch Jesus' clothes, I shall be made whole. And immediately the fountain of the blood, now where she was hemorrhaging. Okay, she's hemorrhaging, she's hemorrhaging for 12 years. She's, she had gone to every doctor she could. She spent all her money and, and never got any help. But she said with her heart, if I could just touch, if I could just touch. His garment. Now, it's very important that we understand. What we don't want to do, we don't want to become comfortable being in the house of God or going through our daily life and not coming in touch with God. Amen. See, that's, that's, what we, that's why we pray. That's why we sing. That's why we pray. That's why we worship. That's why we listen closely to the gift of the Holy Spirit. We want to hear what the Spirit is saying. This, uh, this woman, she came to a plane that man could not help her. Her money could not help her. But she said, if I could to touch. Yes. How many, how many has ever come in, anyway, beside me, come in dry? If I, I need a touch. Yes. yes. See, when I've learned this, that when I don't wait for God to touch me. I begin to touch Him with my prayer, with my singing, with my praise, with my worship. When I, when I begin to touch Him, it will activate God. I'm saying that praise will check us. Prayer, you can pray. God gives it. When we become desperate, we become hungry, we become very thirsty for God, something will happen. Okay, so immediately the fence of her blood was dried up. She felt her body that she was healed. She had witnessed that she had been healed of the plague. The word plague means disease. Now, here's important. This is, what, this is what I'm trying to teach, that every day of her life, that when we read about Bible, when we pray, when, we, when we're just driving down the road, whether you're in the shower, however, that you learn how to experience the presence of God, that you have the manifest presence of God. Okay, so then Jesus then... She knew someone had touched. Yes, Lord. Okay, so verse 30, Jesus immediately knowing within himself that virtue had gone from him. Yes, she, this woman touched Jesus. Oh. Let me put that on them. She, this woman Lord. had touched God in such a way that she drew virtue out of him. Yes. God discerned somebody oh. is so desperate for touch yes, that they touched me in such a way to draw. Yes. Oh, Here's what we never want to do. You, you never want to become comfortable coming and be a spectator and not be a participator. Yes. How many will touch God Amen. every day of their life? Yes. 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 Can the word virtue mean this? Drew something that was miraculous yes. 
miracle working power drew force from him to the very Whoa. touch God in such a way that drew power from God. Amen. I mean, no life is the power. Oh, and the anointing yes. is the power, okay? Yes. Okay, so she touches Whoa. God himself in such a way that she drew virtue out of him to the place that God turned around and said, Whoa. Who touched me? Yes, Lord. Who, who is so desperate for touch? They come to me, they would go through the crowd and touch me in such a way just to draw virtue out of me. So every prayer meeting, every song service, we want to touch God in such a way we draw virtue from God. That's how you become so alive you can't shut up. You can't stop saying, you can't stop praying, you can't stop reading your book. You're so hungry, you're so thirsty that you have received a touch and the touch is so good you want more. You're satisfied where you are, but there's, you know that, oh my God, God is so good. I've never exalted what God has for me. Okay, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 1. I'll just be here briefly. Okay, Luke chapter 1, and we'll, uh, we'll look at verse 41. And it came to pass when Elizabeth heard that the greeting of Mary. Okay, so basically, remember, Elizabeth was barren, and now Mary, the mother of Jesus, is pregnant with Jesus. Okay, the angel of the Lord had come to Mary, appeared to Mary. Elizabeth had been barren. Now, Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. John the Baptist is to be a voice crying in, crying in the wilderness. Okay, John the Baptist is a forerunner, and Elizabeth, who had been barren, is pregnant with John the Baptist, who will be a forerunner of Jesus. Amen. Okay, so then Mary goes to visit Elizabeth, and when Mary walks into the room and Mary speaks, remember Jesus said, "The words I speak, their spirit." And they are life. Okay? The words I speak, they're spirit and they're life. So Mary is pregnant with Jesus. Yes. And I may just say that men you may just God giving me this dream. I've had dreams of me being pregnant. Wasn't pregnant in the natural, was pregnant with the yes. Spirit of God. Yes. That you could be pregnant mm -hmm. in the spirit, not be pregnant in the natural. Okay, so Mary is pregnant with Jesus, and Elizabeth is pregnant with John the Baptist. And when Mary speaks, the, the baby in the womb of Elizabeth, which is John the Baptist, began to leap for joy because it heard the voice of God. What I'm saying is, there'll be a gifting, there'll be anointing, there'll be, there will be a deposit within you. There'll be, the Spirit of God will be in you, and when you hear God speak through someone else, there'll be a witness of the Spirit, and inside of you, the Spirit of God in you will leap. You will leap. So there's a feeling, there's a, there's a, that's why it's important that we understand the words that speak to the Spirit in their life, that there's an anointing, there's an impartation uh, that by, by the voice in it, it can be like very powerful. Okay? Amen. Let's go to uh, Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Now let me just ask a question here and you, know, you want to be careful how you respond to this. And I let me just put it this way, I won't ask the question, I'll just put there's been times I've come to the church and I've I felt quite dead. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't feel engrossed with the spirit of resurrection. I, I felt a little dead. Now say that to say this in, in Luke chapter seven, verse eleven. Came the past the day after that Jesus went to the city called Nain, and, and many of his, his disciples went with him, and much people. And when they came back to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man. There's a dead man, there's a funeral going on. Yeah. The only son of his mother. She was a widow. Here's a widow woman. Her husband had died, now her son had died. And much of the people of the city was with her. And when Jesus saw her, he had compassion upon her. Amen. And he said to the woman who had lost her husband and lost her only son, We not. Amen. Amen, Lord Jesus. And Jesus came to touch the coffin. Amen. That's so awesome. Amen. Wow. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus came and touched the coffin where the dead men's in the coffin, and they that bore him stood still. But the, uh, the pallbearers, the pallbearer. So there's a funeral going on. Jesus comes along. There's a uh, the woman's the the widow woman's dead son's in the coffin. They stop. They're holding the casket, and and Jesus Jesus says, "Weep not, woman." And the, the pallbearers stopped, they, they, they stood still, and Jesus said, Young man, I say it to thee, arise. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. And he that was dead, yes. which means that corpse, he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Yes. Now, I don't want this dead guy in the casket to be able to respond. I don't want him to out-respond me. Amen. Now see, I can come in here and I, you know, I'm, I'm not in the coffin. I may feel a little dead. But I don't want this guy. I want to meet this guy in heaven. I, I don't want this guy to out-respond me. See, where is your starting point? There's this guy's starting point. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you see what I'm saying? In other words, we don't want to feel comfortable. We never want to get to the place. We come in, we leave the same condition. This guy, did this guy have a gun encounter? No. This guy, this guy is at the mercy of God. I mean, he, he, he can't pray. He can't sing. He can't praise. Because he's dead. But mama can pray. She can look upon the mother and felt compassion. I don't want this man like that dead, cold in a cor a cork in a coffin. I don't want him to out obey and out respond me. Amen. You may be a little tired. <laughs> you may be a little tired, you may feel a little dry, you may feel a little worn out, something may be going on, but that God. Yes, Lord. We can hear the voice of God in such a way a baby in the mother's womb leaps. Yes. The dead man sets up to get to speak. Oh. My God, my God. Yes, Lord. It's amazing. And he that was dead, verse 15 set up and began to speak, and, he, and Jesus delivered him to his mother. Amen. Now, this is what I try to say often, and I will give you a scripture for it, and I came to fear upon all. Now, what I'm saying is, when I walked out of the sanctuary to, to go downstairs Sunday, and, and you hear me say this in, in, a, in a different way, I said, I'm afraid, and, but when I'm talking about the fear of the Lord, yes. yeah. the fear of God came upon them when I saw what God did Sunday morning, the fear of God came upon me. Mm -hmm. yes. And what I'm saying is, when you realize yeah. how people's lives are being changed, what I'm saying is, God not playing. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying yeah. this is the beginning of, of God wants to do. This is just, this is just a, an appetizer of what God wants to bring in. Yeah. And God wants to bring it. He doesn't want you to take it to a good sit-down restaurant. He wants to take it to a smorgasbord. You yeah. can eat all you want. Amen. Yeah. And this is just a little whip appetizer what God has for it. And I'm saying that when when you see the miracle working power of God, when you begin to see and really understand what God was doing Sunday morning, the fear of God come, the fear of God came upon these people and the fear of God came upon me Sunday morning. Anybody else experience the fear of God? Amen. That there's a reverence, there's a holy reverence that this is real. I'm not going to look at anything, I'm not going to listen to anything, I don't want to do anything wrong, I don't want to, I don't want to, I, Come to the place that you're you, you're not physically going to do anything wrong, but you're not going to entertain it here. You're not going to entertain that. No, not even one little thought. The thought we get to go, shut up this right now. Just, this is so good. Amen. When you get this, you're free from that. Amen. And that's what the fear of God that this is so big, this is so good, that God is so good, I fear missing him. Amen. So that's an aspect of the fear of God that God is so good that I want to stay tuned in. I want to be in the spirit realm, not in the flesh. I want to be in the spirit realm, not in the natural. I want the spirit realm, not in the uh, 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 in the world, because I want to. I don't want to waste my time because this is so real. So the the fear of God came upon them, and they begin to go by God. Wow, that's it. Yeah. Lord, how do you 
I mean, people were really singing and praising. There was so much happening in, in all, all, just about every part of the sanctuary here. Yeah. Sunday morning, there was so much happening. Yeah. Then people were glorifying God, which yeah. means they were magnifying God, they were, they were honoring God, they were praising right. Him, and they were worshiping God. Yes. There were devils being cast out. Uh, there, there was uh, tongues, there was interpretation, there was prophecy, there was counseling. The uh, people were, were weeping, the people were wailing, people were praising, people were worshiping. All kinds of things were happening Amen. in the spirit realm. And I'm saying that church. Amen. Say that church. Can they begin to glorify God? They said that there's a great, a great prophet has risen among it, that God, God has visited his people, and the rumor of him went forth throughout all of Judea and throughout all the region of Mount. Now the reason I wanted to share that part right there, so that when the when the miracle happened, they went out and told everybody what that the miracle happened. Nowadays, you cast out a demon, you prophesy to someone, uh, the sick get healed, and you go tell people that you must be going to some kind of cult. Because many people in America have become comfortable with dead, boring, dry church services. They get more from a ball game. They get more shopping than they do That's a Pentecostal right. spirit filled church service. And I'm saying God wants to return that around. Amen. I'm saying that God wants to bring world worldwide revival. And I'm saying that there's a remnant. Amen. And the remnant is being hid in the womb of barren people like Elizabeth. Who's going to bring forth a paper way for a new visitation? One of the things about the men that you'll be hidden in secret preparation. Uh, the Bible said John the Baptist, basically John the Baptist was hidden, and here's what the Bible said, until the day of his showing, he was hidden until the day of his showing to Israel. God may have you in a hidden position. Yes. Wow. And you want to, you know what you're going to have to try to kick doors open and let God open that door. Amen. And so the patience uh, that uh, John the Baptist had there. Okay. Um, Luke chapter 7 again, and we're going to begin this time around. And I, I just love this. This to me is so powerful. And uh, we're kind of saying the same thing, different directions, so that we can really chew upon this and understand it because God, wa God wants to. He's beginning to move, but when I feel like whenever we invite him and we welcome him, and when we got the wind begins to blow one way, when, when we can respond with him and let God have his way, we got to be real careful. We can't be putting God in the box. We can't, we can't put time limits upon God. We need to let the Spirit of God have his way. I mean, want God to have his way. Yeah. And I understand sometimes it just takes time to transition from the natural man to the supernatural. It takes time to transition from the flesh to the spirit. Sometimes we get our spirit a little vexed out there. And so it yes. takes us a little bit of time. There's no, there's no yeah. condemnation how anybody comes in that door. No but you're not going to leave like you came in. Because no. we're going to learn how to come in contact with God. Yes, we're going to learn how to get beyond our circumstance, yeah. to reach out and touch. God says, when we draw virtue yes. from all way to God. Yes. And then God will be attracted to who touched me. Yes, Lord. Okay, now, in verse 36. <coughs> excuse me. And one of the Pharisees desired him that it would come eat with him. And Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and said, Don't eat. Behold a woman in the city which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus set uh, the chow down in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. There's the oil. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. She brings an alabaster box of ointment stood at his feet behind him, behind him, then they feel worthy to be in front of him, stood behind him weeping. There was a whole lot of weeping went on Sunday morning. Yes. There was weeping. So I asked myself, when's the last time I have wept before God? See, that's what we need to ask ourselves. If, if, if weeping is biblical, how long has it been since I've wept for others? See, we could get real angry. We get a bill in the mail, our car, uh, in the mail, our, our car breaks down. We can... Well, it's so nice to go to hell with not move, not touch. <laughs> this woman hears that Jesus is eating at a Pharisee's house. She goes to the Pharisee's house. She brings in an alabaster box of ointment. She stood at his feet behind him weeping. She began to wash his feet with tears. Yes. Now, this is a beautiful, beautiful picture of worship. Yes. 
Yes. And then she, she, when that when you can just wash his yes. feet with tears, and so when when you understand who God is and that God is love and how good He is and how good He is to you and the love of God, the mercy of God. When you understand who He really is, if you if you've been more than been to church, if you've been to the cross and died and you've experienced a resurrection and you see Him like He really is and you know Him, you'll weep, you'll cry. Yes. Okay, so this woman, she comes from the alabaster bar, she's doing this, he's behind you, weep, she's weeping. She begins, she's oh. weeping and crying so much, she's washing his feet with her tears. She did wipe his feet with the hairs of her head. And long hair, she's weeping so much, she's so grateful, she's so thankful, she knows who he is. She kisses his feet. Amen, Lord Jesus. And anointed his feet with ointment. Now, when the Pharisees, when they, these self righteous oh, Pharisees, saw it, yeah. the Pharisees said to them himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman this was that's <laughs> touching him, for she's a sinner. Yeah. All yes. Sin, yeah. All him sin. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Certainly have. Religious. Here's why sometimes we don't get a breakthrough. We can see other people's stuff, but not our. Yeah. So this is a beautiful picture here. See that you're going to see a difference between people who's been washed. That how grateful they are. But see, here's what religion will do to you. Someone comes in and is weeping, wiping the feet. She's crying and weeping so much. She's soaking his feet with her tears. She takes her hair and washes his feet with her hair and is crying and sobbing. And then someone can be very critical. Now, part of our preparation is understanding no matter what you do, you're going to tick somebody off. So you just want to obey God and let the chips yeah, over the yeah, main. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, when back then when they when oh, when when God said Terry tell you to do it, and they and they had the faith yes. and the mercy of God to, to climb up to the upper chamber after they forsook him. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Until they had fled from their own death, the, from their own person of Gethsemane, then they had the faith to climb up there, and then when the, the spirit God pours out the spirit upon them. Then they are accused of being drunk. You're drunk. Then here are the Pharisees accusing them. If this man were a prophet, he'd know what kind of woman this is. <laughs> see the uh, see the difference of the attitude of the Pharisee yeah. and the woman that's washing his feet with tears. Yeah. So you know, you know, you want to evaluate yourself if you see someone washing his feet. You don't want to be critical. If you see someone else being moved, that's speaking and being moved, this is the place where you can feel free to be moved. Amen. Come on, Absolutely. seriously. This is the Amen. place that God brings people. My calling is to yes. prepare people for ministry. My calling, oh. my calling is that your life may be restored. Yes. And people who do, really don't want to go up with God, they, they normally don't stay here very long. They, when they see them, ah, this is now a place to hide. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. But, but people that really want to go off with God, that's my calling. Okay, And so it took me a long time to discern and really figure out, okay, what, uh, what is my calling? And now I understand my calling and I'm very comfortable in flowing with it. You've got to understand when you begin to respond to God, not everybody going to be happy. So we've got to understand if it's a bit my, my responsibility to teach you what's biblical, okay? Because we can, the, the people can do the right thing at the right place at the right time, but with the wrong motives, okay? So we, we help people with that. We don't reject people for that. But we can help uh, if, if somebody were to make a mistake. Okay, so basically then, if this man, so the, that religious phony, scribe, Pharisee, hypocrite, spirit, say, if this man were a prophet, he would know kind of man, woman this in the touch again, for she is a sinner. Yeah. And Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to say to you. So Jesus goes turn to this man, and knowing Jesus knows what's going on in this man's heart. So I'm going to have someone to say to you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He's sure that Jesus is going to say something real big about him. Oh, and Master, say on. 
Jesus then speaks this little parable. There was a certain creditor that owned two, two debtors, and, and one owned 500 pence, and the other 50. Uh, some, some debt to God is greater. Okay? And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them. Well, tell me which one loved them. Let's just say if someone owned someone five dollars, if someone else owned uh, five million dollars, and, and and God forgave both of the debts, who would who would really be who would seem to really make a fuss about? Oh, I really, man, I really appreciate this. But one forgiven of five dollars, one to be forgiven a debt of five million dollars. Who would who would be the most appreciative? Five million. The five million. Okay, now. Okay, so that's what Jesus is saying. And Simon said in answer verse 43, I suppose that he that, who has been forgiven the most. And Jesus said to them, you have rightly judged. And Jesus now turns to the woman and said, and, uh, said turns to the woman and said, turns to the woman, turns to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered into your house. You didn't give me any water for my feet. It was basically an insult. Because in the culture, when a, when a guest came, they would wash the feet of the guest because they wore sandals and the dust of people on their feet. So they would wash the feet. The servants would, would wash the feet. Jesus came to the house of the Pharisee and no one washed his feet. Mm, yeah. wow. It's basically an insult in their culture. Yeah. Yeah. So then the woman comes in and what does she do? She now this is what Jesus said. Says to to. He looks at the woman and says to Simon, See, is now this woman? Simon, I entered to your house and you gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears. Yes. I'm saying yeah. that if someone has a scribe, Pharisee, hypocrite spirit, see, we can, we can come to God's house and feel comfortable ignoring God. Someone ought to be a filthy sinner, come in and weep. Soak up a whole bunch of Kleenex. <laughs> and I'm saying that God knows the difference. I'm saying that oh, what we don't want to do is become comfortable Amen. with a telephone pole That's anointing right. and never be new oh. that we're not appreciative. Yes, that we think, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, God, I'm, oh. I'm taking time out of my schedule. I'm coming to your house while we feel comfortable ignoring the God of the house. And so basically, the scribe and the Pharisee, the hypocrite, is very comfortable dishonoring God. And Jesus said, you gave me no water for my feet, but this woman, when we are in right position with God, we'll sing. Yeah. We'll pray. Yes. We'll praise. We'll worship. You, we'll reach out and touch Him. Yeah. We will not care what other people think. Yeah. We don't care what they say. We don't care what, what they do. Yeah. If it's not working, we're going to do it because this is about meeting with God in such a way our life is continuously changed. We never want to feel comfortable coming in and trying to criticize God and the way He does things. And not washing His feet with our tears. And Jesus just brings us right out in the open. So good. If the Pharisee would have left some stuff alone, if he hadn't been so critical within his heart, If this guy were a real prophet, he would know that this woman's a sinner that's touching him. If he's just left well enough alone, he wouldn't have got the rebuke. But the rebuke wasn't to keep him out. The rebuke was to bring him in. The rebuke was to give him some truth about himself that he could not yet see. Yes, thank you, Lord. So sometimes I need. Sometimes when when I get a little stiff. Sometimes when I get a little yeah. stiff, that God give me some truth about myself. Now I'm back down. Now where's the cleanest box? Yes. Come on, say again. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that this when we lose when we lose the awareness of who God is, how big He is, that God is love and that God loves us, that I can be in hell right now for eternity and eternity. Hell's up and eternity is a long time. The mercy of God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. When we lose the passion, the Bible says faith works by love. When we lose the love of God, love people. Two grace commandments. Pray, pray daily for the grace of God to fulfill the true grace commandments. Love God, love people. Yes, Lord. 
the perversion of that is loving yourself, loving pleasure, loving the world, loving entertainment, <laughs> loving recreation, loving comfort, loving things, loving money, loving all these things, one of the big lovers of God. And that brings a stiffness, and then we get that pharisaical spirit, and we criticize other people. See, sometimes we can become critical of people that pay the cost to meet with God since we ended through life change. And if, if I'm not willing to pay the cost, <laughs> I can become critical. True. Yeah. Forgive me, Father. Very yeah. true. That's true. This Jesus says, see, some people don't understand. God can be direct at times. Yes. But see, if Simon is just left well enough alone, but since he said within his heart that if this guy were a prophet, he would know who this woman is that's touching him. This is a sinner. <laughs> So Jesus looked at the woman and said to Simon, you're going to be careful that you see the Spirit of God using someone. If God can speak through a jackass, yeah, that's right. be careful being critical who God may speak to and God may speak through. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. You want to be real careful, be critical, yeah. fault finding and judgmental. See, that brings a deadness, brings a bareness upon yes. it. And that's what that's what we're seeing is that over and over again, the Spirit of God be, be moving in some people. Holy man of God's face, they were being moved by the Holy Spirit. I want to get to the place that on a daily basis, I'm being moved by God. Amen. Move me, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Simon, I, I came in your house and you gave me no water for my feet, but this woman. Yeah. Uh, she didn't bring a bottle of water with her, but she washed my feet with her tears. To me, that's a beautiful picture of worship. When we feel comfortable coming to God's house and ignoring the God of the house and not worshiping. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> oh, help us. Not talking about anybody. Bring the word that will elevate us. Okay, that will elevate us. I, I have trouble uh, pronouncing this word, but I get an ocean of buoy. 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 She is good with buoy. Buoy. See, it, flo it floats to the top. See, and uh, and and uh, we want we want to we want to just be alive in God. She has washed my feet with her tears. And she wiped it with the hairs of her head. Now listen to what Jesus said to her. You gave me no kiss. Remember how that section of the world they kiss on that side, kiss on this side, you see that still to this day. You gave me no kiss, but this woman she didn't kiss him on the cheek, she kissed him on the feet. On his feet. See, um, if Simon just left well enough alone. <laughs> So Jesus said, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with your stuff. I, Simon, I came to your house, but you, you gave me no water for my feet, but this woman has washed my feet with it. You gave me no kiss. Again, an insult. Uh, they, they didn't, uh, it was an insult to a guest. You gave me no water for my feet. You gave me no kiss. You didn't welcome me. You didn't greet me. You invited me to your house, but you... We can invite him into our house and ignore him. <laughs> this woman, since the time I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. The woman was getting on Simon's nerves. Oh, yes. <laughs> Really does. Jesus didn't stop there. Verse 46, my head. You didn't anoint my head with oil. No oil. No washing of the feet. No kiss. No greeting. No love. 
you didn't anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, but your many, are forgiven. Now, this is real important. And I said all this to say all that to say this. Jesus then says, He that he that has been forgiven much loves much. But what I'm saying is there needs to be churches where filthy sinners like I was can come. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And, and our goal is not to get in and out in 45 minutes or an hour and 50 minutes. Our goal is to tarry in the presence of God in such Amen. a way that we want to worship. Uh, this happened for a while. This woman kissing his feet, washing his feet. Come on, a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. And, and the, the scribe Pharisee is, is irritated. Wherefore I say to the her sins, which are many are forgiven. He or she that's been forgiven much will love us. And I'm saying the people that have been forgiven, but there's a great love, there's a great appreciation within God, and Amen. they don't need fast food yes. church services. We need to be with God yes. such way that our life is continuously changed. Amen, Lord Jesus. Change me, Okay, um, I'm going to just, I'm going to stop right there. Because I want to. Hallelujah. Let's stop right there. That's the scripture that's been coming to me today. Before I get